Hi, welcome to Tool Tuesday. This week on Tool Tuesday, I'm going to talk about my carving and whittling tool setup. Uh, this will tie into last week's Tool Tuesday and kind of round that out, uh, kind of a little series, if you will. That episode was based on my EDC and my knife collection. So, and this also will relate to a Facebook post that I had done probably a couple months ago showing my tool setup and like some books that I use for whittling and whatnot. Um, this one, I won't be talking about the books. I'll pretty much just be focusing on my, my tool setup and uh, my toolbox. So here we go. I'm going to change the camera angle and we'll go over everything I've got here. Okay. So this is a little box that I'd made. I like this style, this kind of vintage uh, carpenter's box look. And so I just got a, I believe it was um, one by one by 10 from Home Depot. And I made this probably about a month or so ago. Stained it with early American wood stain. I uh, treated the wood with linseed oil and then went over top of that and sealed it with a mix that I have of linseed oil and beeswax. Um, it's all just nailed together. I wanted the nailed look. I actually kind of wanted the nails to rust a little bit, but they kind of have a blackened look to them. Um, and with the linseed oil and all the beeswax and everything, it'll probably ne never rust. But anyhow, this is my little toolbox. There's everything I have inside. And so here we go. Um, the first tool roll, it's right on top. This has just my carving knives in it. Uh, buy these from Beavercraft. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they're uh, pretty affordable and they make a pretty decent product. So here's, here's what the tool roll looks like. And you unfold it, it has four, four pockets. <clears throat> so the first knife is a, uh, I believe that is, let me look real quick. That's a two inch roughing knife. I don't use that very much because I don't, uh, recently I've been doing the one inch by one inch square blocks. Um, not a whole lot of use for that there. And then the next one, I believe that's inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Uh, that's like a detail knife. I use this the most. And then they actually don't offer a small detail knife. And this one is, I believe I've got that down to three quarter. And what this one was, was this knife here. And I actually just cut the end off and then reprofiled the tip to give me a little detail knife. The only problem I have with it right now is it's, it's a little bit on the thick side. And then this one here is chip carving. I don't do chip carving, but it came in a set. So that's cool. Um, so that's that tool roll there. And we'll bust out the next one here. Bear with me, move this to the side. Next tool roll. Again, you can get these uh, Beavercraft I, I ordered right off of Amazon. Uh, you can buy the tool rolls, they're around eight bucks or so. So this one I put together and it is not Beavercraft. And I'm not sponsored by these guys either, but here, here's this one, it's four pockets and these are uh, palm chisels. And uh, these are by FlexCut. And what I did was, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sponsored by them either, but you know they as well make a nice tool. Uh, Flex cuts a, a little bit more pricey than Beavercraft, uh, but very, very nice tool. What I did was I scratched off the Flex Cut emblem and got the clear coat off and kind of um, put a little, a little stain on there just to help them match the Beavercraft handles. Um, Beavercraft doesn't really have a palm tool set that I could find on their website. And I like to piece these together. Uh, another YouTuber has a video on basic hand tool setup for beginner carvers and whatnot. And that's kind of how I based this and pieced it together. So there's a, a palm gouge. I think they call that a sweep gouge. And a little V tool. Can't really see it. And then a palm chisel. And a palm skew. 
I haven't really got into using the palm tools too much. Uh, I'm still still learning and um, really want to get my cuts down so I'm not focusing too much on detail and most of the detail that I do now, like if I want to cut a V groove, I, I want to get the dexterity and just the muscle memory in my hand and learn how to do it with just a knife. And uh, as I progress on and do more complicated carvings and, and whatnot, I'll, uh, I'll focus more on using the tools because that'll help speed things up. But right now I'm still trying to learn the technique and everything. So here's another tool roll. roll. This was bought in a kit and this is for spoon carving. <clears throat> and this has a, uh, a detail knife. I don't like this one too much. The, the knife, the shank sticks out a pretty good ways and it's kind of long, it's a little bit long for what I, what I like to do. But um, it's a, I really like these handles. It's kind of a common design. Flex cut has the same, same style there as I think have a little more shape on the sides, but it, it fits really nice in the hand. And then this big old Sloyd knife, he's a pretty big guy. Uh, I did one spoon carving and then it, it came with a, uh, a spoon knife and this is the left-handed spoon knife because I'm, I'm a lefty and I actually to round it out I got a, uh, a spoon gouge and then this is just a, a cheap little uh, gouge that I've got thrown in there to help out on small stuff so that's that's that roll there and get this boxed up and roll here and we'll move on to the last one the last tool roll I put this one together this is basically just some knives uh, I had watched a video on I can't remember whose channel it was but they did carving with a utility knife and I used it I did a little bit with it it's kind of neat so I just threw that in the kit. This is the uh, Schrade Old Timer. Uh, I believe it's the Splinter. Um, has a whole bunch of different tools on it. Has a little scorp, I think they call that. And then a spoon tool. And I won't go over them all. It's got a, a gouge. Um, what I found with this guy is it's... Uh, the steel is a little bit on the softer side and it's kind of hard to keep it sharp. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I did do a little bit of work with that. Actually, the, the first spoon that I did, uh, well, the only spoon that I did, I did uh, I finished up with this guy. And then here's another Schrade. This is, a, I believe it's Schrade. It's Uncle Henry. And um, I just took, it has multiple blades. I took one of the blades and modified it. Which one is it now? I think it was that one. I just modified it, the tip, and uh, honed it up and made a little carving tip out of it. So it's a multi, multi-blade uh, carving knife, pocket carry. And then I have the uh, in the fourth pocket. I would have my Swiss Army that I made a while back, and um, but I keep that in another kit that you'll see in a minute. So pair of glasses because uh, I need to have a hard time seeing anymore. Cut resistant gloves. I have a little, uh, just a little jar with a mix of linseed oil and beeswax. And this one, I put a little ribbon of oil-based, I believe it was Van Dyke Brown. And that makes a dark rub that I can put on pieces to give them a little bit of a color to them. And then I have another this is just beeswax and linseed oil, uh, so I can put on things. And both of these, they're about the consistency of like uh, hand lotion, maybe a little bit thicker, like Vaseline maybe. I've got a little bottle of uh, mineral oil that I could put, it's like food safe, so you can put that on, say if you make a spoon or something like that, or you just generally, if you just wanna put a, a little oil rub to help preserve your, your piece. And this is all, you know, just little stuff I keep here in the house because most of the time I do my whittling in here at the kitchen table. I'll sit here and listen to the radio and, and uh, whittle for an hour or so. This is a project that I started that uh, didn't really follow through with and what it's turned into is a little test block that I use for when I 
sharpen and strop things up. I uh, basically do little test cuts to see how, how the progression is. And I have my strop. The strop, the leather comes from Beavercraft. It comes with, uh, whenever you buy the sets, it comes with a strop. And then I just made a piece of piece of wood backing for it. I used a strop. I have the edges rolled over. I use them for my V gouge or my V tool and my gouges. I'm gonna have a little wooden box here, that I just like a $5 box off of Amazon. And it has, I've got super glue in there. I've got my stropping compound. I have a little um, multi-tip, little screwdriver, little pin vise, a uh, set of dividers, some drills. I've got a little San Stanley ruler that uh, is also a caliper. Uh, some pencils and then different screwdriver tips and whatnot. It's a nice little set it Really works nice for my tools and then when it sits in the uh, box here that little groove I just lay my strop and everything just sits in there and it doesn't go anywhere And I also have this little mix here. It's water and alcohol You're supposed to be able to spray your wood and it makes it easier to carve uh, I did I don't know if I over wet it, but it seemed like it made the wood was kind of like stringy. I didn't really like it too much So that's my current setup And then I have this little mini travel case. It's based on an old the old tin School lunch boxes some of you might have had when you were a kid, but this is a fraction of the size and In this kit, it's just a real quick grab-and-go. I have another pair of magnifying glasses my cut resistant gloves and a mini strop, pencil, little homemade ruler, little baggie with some strop compound in it. And in here I have my Swiss Army, the carver knife that I had made. And uh, I like this little setup. It worked really well for, I actually used, used it not too long ago we had to go somewhere and I was waiting out in the, in the truck. And while I was out there waiting, oh, I also have, it has room. I have a couple blocks of wood in here, um, but there's also room to spare if I have a project that I'm in the middle of like my chest set. You know, if I'm working, I have the main blank that I work, the, the piece that I'm working from and then the piece that I'm carving, I still have room to throw them in there. And it, it makes it nice because it, it's really small. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You could toss that in a glove box, a console, throw it under the seat. Uh, you can put it anywhere and it just, it really works out nice. It's just a quick grab and go, um, as opposed to having a knife and a strop and things like that and having to carry it all with you. So let me turn you up here. That's my, that's my setup for now for carving and whittling. That's the pretty much the extent where we're at. I have more books that I've ordered and I, I, I get, there's plenty of YouTube videos and such, but I like the books because you can you can photocopy things out of them and make your templates and patterns and a lot of the books come with patterns in them. So I'm constantly buying the books and, and I like having them around because you can open a book up and set it out and listen to the radio and just sit here and relax and sip on some coffee or adult beverage or whatever you will and, and have a good time. So not too much adult beverage though. You don't want to get tipsy and be trying to wield a sharp knife around, but Hey, if you hung out this long, you're a trooper. I really appreciate you listening to me talk for 13 minutes now. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.